AWS IoT, Industrial Motor Monitoring and Control, Architecture and Tutorial. A factory has several motors. Our requirement is to view status of motors and control them remotely. The factory supervisor uses a motor control application for this. This could be a desktop application or a web page. Let's see how we can implement this. Here's our architecture. We have three distinct high level entities here. The factory, AWS cloud and the motor control application. Motors are our IoT devices in the factory. In AWS cloud, we have IoT core, which is a MQTT message broker. Each IoT device is modeled as a virtual device called a thing along with a corresponding shadow. Shadow stores the state of the device. The factory supervisor uses a motor control application to manage the motors. This application communicates with AWS Cloud IoT Core. Let's learn a little more about a physical IoT device, the motor. The motor itself could be a smart motor, in other words, capable of connecting to a Wi-Fi signal, reporting its status and receiving commands. If not, a separate device could be attached to it that can switch the motor on or off, use sensors to measure various motor parameters and communicate over the internet. This entire entity is our IoT device. We give each motor a distinct name. For security reasons, this device will need to have necessary certificates so that it has the authorization to connect to AWS IoT Core. The motor has three attributes we want to monitor or control. Switch, on or off, mode, a number between one to five, which increases or decreases the motor power and RPM. IoT Core is a MQTT message broker. Client devices can send and receive messages to topics in it. You can use your own topic or one of the reserved topics. Reserved topics start with a dollar sign and have a thing name as a part of the topic name and integrate automatically with a thing shadow. So a message sent to the reserved update topic will change the state of the device in the corresponding thing shadow and result in a success or failure message in an accepted or rejected subtopic. We will see this in action in our demo. In general, this is what reserved topics look like. The thing name and operation should be replaced appropriately. So anyone with necessary authority can send message to the update subtopic and subscribe to response messages on accepted or rejected subtopics. When you create a virtual device or a thing in AWS IoT, you have the option of creating a shadow along with it. Shadow object keeps the state of the IoT device. It's a JSON with the reported and desired states. Now that we understand the architecture, let us proceed with the demo. Our demo will involve creating virtual devices or things and shadows. Next, motor IoT device will report its current state. Then, motor control application will send a desired state change request. Finally, motor control application will retrieve latest motor state. Remember that we do not have a real motor physical device. We will mimic sending receiving messages from motor IoT device using a MQTT test client. So let's begin with creating things and shadows. We are in AWS console, AWS IoT section and from the menu on the left under manage all devices, things, uh, we select create things and select create single thing, hit next, provide a thing name, we'll call it motor one. Okay, and uh, from the device shadows, we'll select unnamed shadow, that is a classic shadow, hit next. And our certificate will be auto generated. Okay, and now we need to create a policy. So uh, let's hit the create policy button. Okay, and provide a policy name. Okay. We will call this uh, motor IoT policy. Okay, and uh, remember you can come to the screen also via the menu on the left, which is under security policies. Okay, so for the policy document, policy action, we'll select star and policy resource star. Now, uh, this is a very permissive permission. 
However, you should ideally select a more restrictive permission uh, in production, for example. Right? So you can find that in policy examples. Hit create. Okay. So now that our policy is ready, let's go back to the create thing screen. Uh, our policy is attached to this thing, and uh, now we can hit the create thing button. And here now we are presented with an option to download the certificate. So we must download the device certificate, the key files, and the root CA certificates. These must be loaded into the IoT device to be able to successfully connect to IoT core. All right. So uh, I have downloaded these certificates here. Here in my file system, I have download, downloaded them. Okay, hit done. And now our first thing is ready, which is motor one. And now we should similarly create uh, motor two and motor three things. So we have created all the three things basically motor one, motor two, and motor three. So let's click on one of them, motor one, and uh, let's see what is there here. Under these tabs, let's go to device shadows. So here you can see. A classic shadow and if we click on that we can see the shadow details so there is a device shadow document so there you can see the state desired and reported it has a default welcome attribute which you can ignore okay and there is metadata along with that okay and now if you go to MQTT topics available here can see that uh, there are get update delete related and QTT topics right and you can see that uh, the thing name motor one is part of the MQTT topic name these are the reserved MQTT topics to interact with the shadow now to the next step in the demo let's look at a use case whereby motor reports its current state the motor IoT device sends a message with the reported state to the thing update subtopic. As a result, the reported state in shadow object undergoes change. A response is automatically sent to the update accepted subtopic. The motor control application can subscribe to the update accepted subtopic to know about the latest change in motor reported state and display it in its UI. Okay, so let's test this. We will use the inbuilt MQTT test client here. So let's click that. And uh, in this test client, you can see that it has already subscribed to all these uh, reserved topics related to motor one. These are reserved topics. Reserved topics start with a dollar sign. And uh, let's send a message to the update subtopic here. Our message payload. It's as if the um, IoT device is reporting its status, right? So there is a reported here along with some attributes. Hit publish. Okay, and let's see the response we get. The response will be published in the update slash accepted subtopic. Okay, so in the response, you can see um, what we had published earlier, right? So this has been accepted. Okay, there is another subtopic called documents. Here we can see the previous and current state, right? So anyone can subscribe to these topics to listen in. Now to the next step in the demo. Here's another use case whereby a motor operator wants to run the motor in mode 5. So he uses the motor control application to send desired state to shadow update subtopic. After the state change, a response is published in the update accepted subtopic. In addition, there is a message generated in the update delta subtopic, which has information on difference between reported and desired state. The motor IoT device can subscribe to update delta subtopic to know about the desired change. In this case, it will run the motor on mode 5. As a result, post this motor IoT device may publish its current state again. Okay, let's look at the message flow whereby the motor control application is uh, publishing a desired state change right so in this case we want to change the mode 
let's do that let's change that to 5 and uh, publish to the update topic hit publish and let's look at the response so we have two subtopics where we will get the response uh, update slash delta and update slash accepted under update slash accepted we'll see the change that we just published and under update slash delta we will see uh, the difference between reported and the desired state change so i to device could listen into that and act accordingly So assuming now that the motor has changed its uh, mode to 5 and uh, now it's uh, reporting back its status. So uh, we send a reported message here where the switch is on, mode is 5, RPM is 1000 and we publish that. And we get a response in the update accepted subtopic and there we can see the reported state and under update documents we can see the previous and current state right so any application with appropriate uh, authorization can listen into these changes and uh, act upon them now to the next step in the demo in another use case motor control application wants to know the latest known state of the motor it sends an empty message to the shadow get subtopic in response motor thinks complete state reported and desired is published in get accepted subtopic which motor control application can subscribe to now if the um, motor control application wanted to find the latest state of uh, the device you can it can uh, send an empty message to the slash get subtopic right and uh, in the response under slash accepted it will see the current state of the device so it can subscribe to that and get the current state of the device now since we used inbuilt mqtt client in aws iot console we did not have to configure the iot core endpoint and certificates in the test client however an actual IoT device or an external MQTT client would need both. So let us see where we can get the IoT core endpoint. Okay, now to get the IoT core endpoint in AWS IoT console under settings, uh, you can find the IoT core endpoint. So you can just copy that. An alternative way to test the use cases is using an external MQTT client like mqtt.fx it uses certificates we downloaded earlier and connects to iot core endpoint let's take a quick look here's how you would set up the mqtt fx client so hit the settings button to set up profile you will have to set up one profile per device so that's the profile name the broker address is the iot core endpoint uh, the IoT core endpoint port which is the broker port and under general just leave all that default user credentials nothing to do under SSL TLS tab select the self signed certificate option and uh, provide the CA certificate and the device certificate and the private key right hit OK and then you can hit connect right so if it successfully connects you will see a green uh, icon on the right hand side and now you are ready to send messages right so you can type the topic name and uh, send a message and similarly under subscribe tab right you can subscribe to relevant topics and this is how you can test your application so that was our industrial motor monitoring and control aws iot solution